Welcome to another episode of Hatching for Health and good evening. So today we're going to be joined by a lovely guest from Sky High for Kids, as well as a mother of a son that was diagnosed with cancer, and we'll get to learn about the treatment. But for those of you that are not aware, September is National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. So that's a very special time for them, as well as all of the loved ones out there that are battling cancer. So thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Yes, yes thank we've you got so much. Brittany Herbert Franklin, CEO and founder of Sky High for Kids, as well as Lauren Allen, who is the mother of Landon, who is a child that has been diagnosed. And I guess it sounds like he was diagnosed in 2018 and just ended treatment this July. Is that right? Yeah, I know. Yay! A huge yeah. deal and accomplishment. We're so thankful. Yes, and it sounds like Sky High has been a, a big part of his treatment, um, which I know is why y'all are here together today. Yes, yes. Sky High for Kids benefits Texas Children's Cancer and Hematology Center. And during one of our routine monthly visits uh, to the hospital, we go in and, and do outpatient and inpatient paint parties and pizza okay. parties. We stumbled upon Lauren and Landon while he was undergoing chemo and got to talking and what do you know, we live in the same neighborhood. And oh so it was gosh, a small It world. was the beginning of a very wonderful friendship and relationship. But yeah, we were there. You know, days at the hospital can be long and hard. Um, the kids um, obviously are not happy to be there. Mm -hmm. So any source of entertainment or joy um, it makes a really big deal to the kids and to the parents. And so, um, you know, to, to have Brittany and Sky High for Kids there and um, just take their minds off things and, you know, activities such as painting or what, I mean, just it makes a really yeah, pretty, big deal and amazing. I'm so Absolutely. thankful. Yes. So, so tell me, Brittany, um, a little bit. I know I kind of read through your bio to learn kind of how you got started with this because it's been now since 2014, which sounds like when it was founded. 2007. You, 2007. Yes. And then 2014 is when you really took off and started to, to raise money to actually give to those you know, different hospitals and organizations that were treating children with cancer. Is that right? Yes, yes. So so tell me a little bit about, I guess, those seven years, because that's that's a big time frame, you know, to kind of start something and then all of a sudden, you know, really unleash um, the, its full potential. Yes. So in 2007, we started Sky High for Kids in Lafayette, Louisiana. I'm from Abbeville, so I okay. went to college in Lafayette. And actually, when I was in high school, I visited St. Jude Children's Research Hospital for the first time as a volunteer. And to be quite honest, you know, I did not experience any type of disease or um, want for much growing up on a small farm. Uh, and so I was introduced to childhood cancer as a freshman in high school. And I really didn't understand what was going on. I was surrounded by 53 families that were homed at the Ronald McDonald House of Memphis that were oh, receiving wow. treatment at St. Jude. And it changed my life right then and there. So, I bet. So, yeah. and that kind of leads me to the next question because it, at 21 years old, you were actually asked to raise funds mm -hmm. for St. Jude. Jude. Yeah. Um, and they had come to you saying, hey, we would love for you to you know, work on raising $10,000. And you hosted an event and actually raised $50,000. Is yes. that right? Yes. We net profited $50,000 with a group of girls that we all got together um, that I worked with at Edie's. And, we launched Sky High right then and there with a sporting clay tournament, you wow. know. So you, yeah, you must have realized, okay, this is like definitely a direction I need to be going in to, you know, because that's, you don't hear that. I mean, even with Hatching for Health, I mean, it's a foundation still in its early stages. Um, we use the show, you know, to create awareness, but um, but that's just huge. It's it's hard to find people to support what you're doing. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, you know, I'd call it competition, but it's, you know, amazing competition, right? Yes. As far as organizations wanting to, to help especially children you know that that really can't always help themselves mm -hmm. um, so it you know kind of falls on the families and what resources they have so you are you know such a huge resource obviously speaking <laughs> firsthand with you know with this mother well yeah I was gonna say that you know when you hear that your child has cancer obviously like your whole world stops stops and changes um, and you're just spinning. I mean, you're just trying to take it minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day. And and then all of a sudden, you know, these organizations like Sky High for Kids and you have these amazing doctors and nurses at Texas Children's Hospital. And it makes you realize before cancer, childhood cancer even entered your world, there were people like Brittany who cared and raised funds and 
you know, gave to hospitals like Textron's Hospital and families like myself that, you know, so when you find yourself in that position, like you are so thankful Absolutely. that, you know, you never thought you would go through your child having cancer, but oh my goodness, like I am, I'm forever grateful that there are people like Brittany who, you know, cared so much. And, and then when you find yourself in that position that you are taken care of for and you're loved and you're provided for, and you have so many resources at your hands. And, and your son was just, is it, was it four years old when he? He was, was three, he was almost three. four. Okay. Um, and so he, what was that moment like for you? Was it? So um, he had had really bad knee pain. And I mean, like snapping my fingers, it kind of came on. Um, and he had it all weekend and then he started running fever. Um, and we took him to the pediatrician and they said, you know what, why don't you go to Tex Jones Hospital and just get his blood taken? They thought maybe it was a bacterial infection. Mm -hmm. So, you know, no, you're not thinking worst case scenario. Your, your son's yeah, knee hurts and three. he has a fever. He's three. <laughs> Um, and so the blood results came back, not being a bacterial infection, but all of his counts were extremely low. And that's a telltale sign of um, mm -hmm. leukemia. And so he was diagnosed with acute um, lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL. And okay. um, we, the next day, started chemotherapy and began the our- day. The next day. The next day. Within 24 hours, can you imagine? And you know, Landon is one of four children, and so this gives me chills. Like Lauren That's, said, yeah, your you life You don't even stops. have time to prepare. It's like no. this is what we're gonna do because mm -hmm. they're so young, and I mean, I, I assume they just they don't want to wait another day. They no, start they start treating. chemotherapy right away. I mean, your son, your child is getting needles all in them. I mean, and at that point, like they're checking everything, you know, mm -hmm. like, and I'm just waiting to hear something else is wrong, um, and. You know, you're trying to keep it together as a parent, but like, how do you explain to a three-year-old, oh, I'm sorry, they need to, you know, give you another IV, or you have to, I mean, it's just, it's so hard. And, most, and, yeah, it's a difficult thing you'll ever probably go yes, through. Yes, and there's nothing you can do life. as a parent. So, um, yeah, I, it, it is such a whirlwind. And um, again, in those moments and times and throughout our journey, you just need people that, you know, are there for you and support you. And, and that have kind of who, been there for others and know exactly what you need. Exactly. Um, and yep. I think that's that's part of it. Because y'all's, I mean, primary focus is is pediatric cancer. It's, yes. you know, kids, right? Sky that's hyper it. kids. Mm -hmm. so that's our focus. It's, um, and, it, and I, I was reading too, I mean, some of the things that you guys, you know, are accomplishing, I mean, raising $14 million dollars of which four million of that simply in 2019. Is mm -hmm. that right? That's right. I mean, that just shows that you guys I mean, you're not only doing it, but like you guys are just, I mean, really hitting the iceberg. That's incredible. Like the awareness that you're, whatever you're doing, it's it's working and people are learning so that mm -hmm. they can support more, which just means you get to support more people. Yes. Yeah, so going back to your question, you know, for seven years, we were six girls starting at 20, 21 years old with a sporting clay tournament that knew we wanted to dump money into St. Jude Children's Research Hospital because of the amazing work they were doing mm -hmm. that benefits kids globally. And we were 100% volunteer, and we had managed to start raising over a million dollars a year with the help of the oil and gas industry. And we all looked at each other one night and said, like, what do we really want to do? What mm -hmm. impact do we want to make? You know, our vision is to end childhood cancer, so we're going to have to go big or go home. And at that moment, we decided to full-blown run the nonprofit like a business, yeah, like it should be. Exactly. We hired our first staff member who is now our COO, Jesse Deerdorf, who's been with us for five years. Wow. We have eight unbelievably young women that are so dynamic and dedicated to the mission that are working around the clock to host 12 plus events a year. Oh my god. And gosh. to date, like you mentioned, we have managed to donate over $14 million to not only benefit St. Jude, but now Texas Children's Cancer and Hematology Center. Um, and so that's what's happened in the past 13 years. Now we're embarking on a very courageous journey. Um, all eight of us, uh, including our amazing donors, the families that we benefit, mm -hmm. the facilities, our volunteers, our board, uh, signed a $40 million total commitment wow. to raise. Commitment. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, we've made this huge commitment of $40 million. $20 million of, of, of such will go to Texas Children's Cancer Center alone to support the development of the first pediatric immunotherapy center in this country. 
And oh that goodness. alone is a total game changer because there are almost 16,000 children diagnosed annually in the U.S. alone with childhood cancer. It is the number one cause of death by disease for our children. So I think people don't understand that, yeah, the magnitude of childhood cancer. Numbers, yeah. yeah, it's the number one cause of death. And so um, the Immunotherapy Center has 32 amazing rooms and 10 bone marrow transplant rooms. And so we're able to service that many more families, you okay. know, during their treatment process. We're gonna we're gonna take a break. I wanna actually kind of learn more and basically about exactly what's going on there. Um, I know that, thank you so much for joining us. I know we're gonna come back from the break without you. So we loved having you and thank you thank for you. sharing your story. Thank you for all you're doing. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely, we'll take So we will be right back with you after this commercial break. Jessica here with Infinity Diagnostics, located here in the heart of Houston. Follow me in, I'm gonna show you our MRI machine. We have a 1.5 Tesla Siemens magnet. We're able to perform imaging on your spine and multiple other areas. So please come give us a visit for all of your MRI needs. Jessica here again. This is our Sculpod machine. This is a great machine if you are looking to do any type of skin tightening or even reduce cellulite. You just crawl inside and you're in here for a total of 15 minutes. But previous to getting in, you are gonna rub the cellulite cream all over your body. So that's gonna help with the reduction of cellulite. So if you are looking for another option to weight loss, please stop on into Infinity and try our Sculpt Pod. Being diagnosed with a scary sounding disease can be frightening. Imagine what it's like for your child. Over 7,000 rare diseases around the world affecting children. Join me, Jessica Hatch, along with leading experts to help break down medical lingo, explain why and what their little bodies are feeling. Real faces, real stories, and expert advice. And you can watch us on the biggest South Asian TV network in North America, NTV Houston. Jessica Hatch here with Infinity. One of the things that we offer is interventional pain management. So I'm going to show you our pain suite so you can be more familiar with these services. Follow me. We have our C-arm where we are able to do interventional pain procedures that would include the spine as well as any joint injections that you may need. So if you are in pain, please come visit us so we can take care of it. I love being able to use this repair moisturizer. It even includes retinol. And the last cool product I love to finish with is the Glow Serum. When I'm sore after a tough workout, the Muscle and Joint Body Cream by Cool CBD gives me all the relief I need. For the next four days, I literally witnessed a five-year-old child just completely melt away. And on February 14th, which was Valentine's Day, he earned his angel wings. That was the moment. That was the exact moment that I said, we can never give up on families battling cancer. We have to keep going and never stop the fight against childhood cancer. This is for all the kids. God, I thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Never thought I could be able to run or fish again. After that trip, it did a turnaround in his life next to Scott. That was probably the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. I really got to be stronger than this. The organization was started really with just a small, tight-knit group of friends. Um, and it, it began with an idea, an extremely successful idea, and then it grew from Lafayette, Louisiana, to Houston, Texas, to, then to San Antonio, Texas, which is where I got involved. You really see at the events what the mission is. I think Scott has always done a good job of giving a platform to these families that had a success story or, unfortunately, um, have, have lost a child to this battle and it does kind of give them purpose and meaning. 
our impact has grown substantially in addition to growing as an organization on the operation side. But um, really with that has come the amount of kids that we're touching, not only in the U.S. now, but all over the world. So right now, 100,000 children are being diagnosed with cancer every year in Sub-Saharan Africa, and 90% are dying. And so we are helping Global Hope and Texas Children's go in and train the physicians and offer assistance of any sort so that they can treat their people. You know, we're already seeing leaps in that pledge, and the goal is to end pediatric cancer worldwide. When I think about what our legacy could be, it's so beyond bricks and mortar. It's a lifelong commitment to these children. It is a lifelong commitment to supporting research that's gonna ultimately find a cure. And it's our commitment as a team to never give up. We are going to give them a future. Hi, Jessica here. We are in our sleep center on the second floor of Infinity, and I wanted to show you a little bit about what we have here and what to expect when you come and have a sleep set. We have a lovely setup here for you so you can feel comfortable and feel right at home. Our technician will walk you up and he will connect you to all the electrodes so that he is able to get the correct diagnosis while you sleep. So if you are having any sleep problems, please come visit us at Infinity so we can help you and put you on a pathway to better sleep. Welcome back to Hatching for Health. So I wanted to get back with you, Brittany. So on the Immunotherapy Center that is gonna specifically be in Texas Children's Hospital here in uh, the Medical Center, um, go into more detail of that and help us understand you know, what's gonna be done there. Yes, so it was a $10 million pledge commitment by Sky High for Kids, and the Immunotherapy Center actually opened this year in March, despite COVID. We have patients and families infiltrating the 32 rooms that are now available. Like I mentioned, 10 more um, bone marrow transplant units, which were crucial. Yeah. What was happening is they were just um, you know, outnumbered, if you will, and so we needed more space. Um, in addition, immunotherapy is going to be a game changer in how mm. children are treated. As we talked about earlier a little bit, personally, radiation, chemotherapy, and all the different types of chemotherapy, yeah. it is very toxic treatment to a child's body. It's a small yeah. little body. And so this is a less toxic, non-invasive way to treat children. And so it's gonna be a game changer. And this has been in clinical trials and yeah. under research investigation for over a decade. So and now it's here. Is there anywhere else in the world, or I guess in the United States or even world that this is gonna be done, the immunotherapy option? This is the only one specifically for pediatrics in the country at this time. But oh, immunotherapy yeah. is, a, is a buzz. You can yeah. start researching it yourself on mm -hmm. the internet, but it is a buzz for adults as well. And okay. so we're just really proud that the Houston community and all of our supporters in Texas and Louisiana are supporting our efforts to unveil and, and develop this center. Yeah, a $10 million, you know, which is, which is huge. I mean, that wouldn't be possible without Sky High for Kids, you know? Right, you know, you <laughs> think about all the doctors and nurses and researchers that constantly remind us that without the community's help and supporting Sky High, they wouldn't be able to further treatment this quickly. They wouldn't be able to come up with new research options and treatment options. You know, not every child uh, accepts blanket pro protocol for leukemia or for mm -hmm. bone cancer, for brain cancer. So we need to be able to customize treatment options mm -hmm. for families and children. And, and that's more of what that exactly does. Yeah. It, it kind of yeah. creates that customization specific to the child's, you know, diagnosis. Right, right. Going to be a game changer. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. I, I'd love to, you know, kind of follow as that progresses and everything that you guys are able to do. Um, so tell me just in general, the I guess, do you even know the number of children that y'all have been able to, to help as an organization from, you know, I guess kind of the infant stages? I know since 2007, the, the honest answer is we've impacted hundreds of thousands of children. And the reason why I can say that is because of the money that we pour into the research side of things. Yes. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital is the only one of its kind, if you will, in the world that totally collaborates with all other pediatric cancer facilities. Okay. And so the collaboration and the sharing of their research, you know, goes everywhere. And Texas yeah. Children's Cancer Center has a huge research facility as well. So does CHOP, so does New York. So there's different big mm -hmm. facilities around the country, but 
Um, I can say that confidently because of the amount of money that we poured into the research side. Absolutely. Now our comfort programs, like what we do every month when we get to visit the hospital, unfortunately not at this time due to COVID, but meeting a family like the Allens mm -hmm. and like Landon, we would go in monthly and provide pizza and paint activities and different arts and yeah. crafts because like Lauren said, you think your three-year-old or much less your 17-year-old wants to go sit in outpatient chemotherapy treatment all day in the medical center? Yeah, no. It's horrible. So your teenager's getting ready for prom or for their driver's license. Your three-year-old's getting ready to just go play t-ball. Yeah, But exactly. now they're stuck in that situation. So Sky High has been able to bring these comfort programs to them. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually did it virtually during COVID and we are... Fingers oh, crossed, that can't must have wait. Been really special, yeah. yeah. Bingo so. over Zoom was quite <laughs> popular, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, so tell me, so how exactly would a family or an individual, do they come directly to you ever, or is it usually that you guys, the, you know, the help that y'all are providing to Texas Children's or um, St. Jude's, that's how it's helping? Or do you actually, you know, have a family come sky high for kids and say, hey, this is our situation, how can you help? Does that approach ever happen? Yes, yes, quite often actually. So our, our focus is to primarily fund the pledge commitments that we have at St. Jude and Texas Children's, okay. as well as Ron McDonald House of Memphis and Big Love here in Houston. Um, but we do help families with gift baskets, and in mm -hmm. those gift baskets we are able to provide fuel cards because a lot of parents are transporting their children from all over the place. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking out of state. Um, as well as grocery gift cards to be able to help the family mm -hmm. at the, in the time of need. The expenses that are incurred to a family when they're going through any type of illness, but especially cancer because the treatment options are normally, I mean, I'm talking three to five years sometimes. I mean, Landon went through three years, three of, years. of treatment. Yeah. You know, you imagine the cost that, that comes on to a family because most of the time a parent mm -hmm. has to quit their job. You know, most of the time, you know, the time is spent away from siblings um, yeah. and from their spouse. And so it is like a tornado hits when your child I, is diagnosed yeah. with cancer. And so we are able to provide um, those things mm -hmm. and, and uh, again, blankets and, and things that we do arts and crafts through, yeah. our, through our programs. We do not um, give funds directly to patient families. That is not in our yeah. focus, in right? Scope, of course. As that can get a little sticky. Yeah. And there are organizations out there, mm -hmm. um, like the Steel Strong Foundation, Devin Steele, whose daughter Leah survived cancer, that do um, help with utilities and bills for families. Okay. But, um, so yeah, so that's normally. I think what we get most of the time now, mm -hmm. Jessica, which would probably blow your mind, is I get a text message and it's like, oh my God, Brittany, my four-year-old was just diagnosed with leukemia in Lafayette, Louisiana, or in San Antonio, Texas, and they're like, what do we do? And to feel that like moment, oh. you know, I get hot and I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna make two phone calls. Yeah. We're calling the head of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and we're calling the head of Texas Children's Cancer Center. We have those, yeah. you know, resources at our fingertips. Isn't that an amazing it, thing? It, it, it's yeah. crazy. So a lot of times we do help, mm -hmm. you know, facilitate mm -hmm. the first or second stop for that family. That and it, it's got to be like just, you know, what you're doing. I mean, it's got to be so fulfilling. Like I know one of your mottos was like, you know, to do things greater than yourself. And that's like, you're definitely doing that, you know, in so many different levels. So it's, I know I met with you, um, I think two years back and I don't want, I want to cry, but you know, you're an inspiration, honestly, just like oh. what you had already done, what you are doing. And then here two years later, like, I'm like, oh my God, you know, like um, inspiration for myself, you know, with with um, kind of a newly founded organization that's trying to raise money for children um, with, you know, combination of, of rare diseases, disorders, obviously cancer is always on the forefront, um, but there's so many other rare diseases that, you know, that people don't have the answers for that, yes. you know what I mean? It's it's like a phone call with like, no one has the answer. It's, it's crazy. So um, just any kind of research that can be done across all levels for children is it's huge. Yes. Um, so as far as events, I know that you guys are, I mean, heavy hitters with events. <laughs> I think you guys do um, one a month, if not more. So tell me about that. I mean, COVID's been, I'm sure, a difficult time Ooh. to make these possible. Very. So yeah, so tell me a little bit about that with the events. So our eggs are in one big fundraising basket and we do events and we do them well. We, you know, bring the community together, you know, to provide comfort, fun research and save lives. Mm -hmm. That is part of our mission statement. Yeah. And when we can impact and raise awareness 
with 600 people at a banquet versus one person you might meet on the street, we just feel like that is so much more volume and so much better, yeah. right? So uh, COVID really uh, and honestly put us in a perfect storm. We're heavily funded by the oil and gas industry, as mm -hmm. you know, uh, which completely tanked during this uh, pandemic. And then COVID stopped gatherings. And so yeah. we had to get extremely creative and task the team to come up with some really big ideas on how we would be able to continue pushing our mission forward. Yeah. I think in the very beginning, we all looked at each other and decided that our mission was not canceled no matter what, yeah. because cancer is not canceled. Mm -hmm. 43 children today will be diagnosed with mm. some form of childhood cancer. So um, imagine wow. that, yeah. right? And so it's... we looked at each other and said, nothing's gonna stop we us. We can't stop, yeah. We went virtual within four weeks. We were one of the leading nonprofits to go virtual with a first stay home gala. It raised over $100,000 oh in an hour, okay? That's incredible. Yeah, and then we did it again for our Lafayette Regional event. But now, like what I told the girls, we won't live in fear and we can do things safely. We all know that. Yeah. We can wear a mask, we can put hand sanitizer on 65 mm -hmm. times during the day, we can check our temperatures. And so guess what? We're gonna take those protocols, we're gonna implement them into our events and we're going back in person as soon as September 18th in Odessa, Texas, and we are excited. That <laughs> is incredible. That's the, I think that's the event here, the one that y'all are gonna need a sporting clay tournament. Um, is that that one? So we have, over. so our kind of banquet and sporting clay tournament style is in okay. every region. So we'll go to West Texas, September okay. 18th and 19th, banquet at a private airplane hangar, and then a sporting clay tournament the next day. Oh, then we'll, the next, fancy. The, yeah, I the very yeah. next weekend, we'll be right here in Houston at the Armadillo Palace. Who doesn't oh, love the yes, Armadillo I'm Palace? Kirby. okay. Yep, and then we'll have a sporting clay tournament at Greater Houston Gun Club the very next day. Okay. So social distancing will be in place. Again, temperature checks, you'll sign a liability waiver, mask will be handed out, Everything. hand sanitizer. We're ready, okay? okay? We're ready to host an event safely, but we're going back to in-person events. I'm, we're gonna gather that community. I right? love hearing that. I think there's, yeah, it doesn't sound like anything's gonna stop you guys. And and you're absolutely right. You know, cancer's not being canceled, so you guys can't. <laughs> yeah, we can't. We expect, yeah, y'all to, yeah. to stay strong. Well, um, that is the end of our episode. I like have so much more I feel like I want to talk about, um, but we'll definitely provide all of the links um, so that you guys can, you know, go right to their site and learn more. Um, all the various events they have going on, you'll be able to, you know, register, volunteer, whatever it is that yes. you guys offer. Um, yes. uh, obviously, provide you know funding for. So, thank you for being here, Brittany. It was incredible thank getting you. to go into all this detail and learn about Sky High for Kids. Well, and thank you for what you're doing. I mean, I'm. I'm glad that you were inspired just a little bit but you're doing something good because like you said there's over 8,000 rare diseases for children in the world and a lot of them don't have any answers and there's still a lot to do in the cancer world and so because of people like you you're getting the word out to the community i really good appreciate stuff. that thank you so much yes awesome well we had a wonderful evening thank you for tuning in and we'll be back with you next week on tuesday at 7 30.